Welcome to Skype Academy Presents Cloud Voice Introduction. Before we get into the content of this training, please allow me to start with a quick disclaimer. Office 365 and Skype for Business Online are iterating very quickly. We are adding new features and new functionality on a constant base. So, by the time you are watching this training, it might be already outdated. Please get sure and go to aka.ms slash sa dash cloud pbx for the latest version of this training. This, by the way, is the January 2017 version. About me. My name is Thomas Binder. I'm a senior program manager in the customer experience and deployment team, and I will lead you through the training. Today, we'll take a look at what Cloud Voice means. Then we'll talk about the endpoints and clients that users can use to connect to the Cloud PBX. We'll follow with looking at the features that Cloud PBX offers to the users, and then look on how we can connect the Cloud PBX to the PSTN. Finally, we will have a summary and look at the number of resources that will provide us additional trainings. The goal of today's session. After this session, you will know that Cloud PBX provides you with telephonic features. So users in Skype for Business Online can be enabled for Cloud PBX and they will receive a rich number of telephonic features. And we'll talk about these features in the session today. At the same time, administrators will get all the tools and the reports to be effective in managing these users. The other key learning is that I want all of you to understand that there are multiple options how this Cloud PBX can be connected to PSTN. You can get either full telephony service from Microsoft or you can use your existing PSTN infrastructure and we'll dive into that what these options are and what you need to do to set them up. So let's look at the scope for the session. On the right side, you can see a diagram of a number of trainings and topics that we are putting together so that you can better understand Cloud PBX and that you can configure it for your environment. Wherever you see a blue box, it is just really a topic group that helps us to structure these trainings and to help you where does the training fit. If it's a white box, then it's actually a training. So we are here at the very top where we talk about the Cloud Voice introduction. So today it's about understanding Cloud Voice. It's about understanding Cloud PBX. It's about understanding what feature set Cloud Voice offers and to understand how we can connect to the PSTN. However, all the technical details and the details on the options on how to connect to the PSTN, they are out of scope. Same goes for networking. We will not cover it here. But as you can see, the white boxes on the right, there are all these trainings available. So we have trainings on PSTN calling, on connecting to um, PSTN via the on-premises pool or um, via Cloud Connector Edition. There are trainings, deep dive trainings on Cloud PBX features such as leveraging voicemail with Exchange Server on-premises, um, auto attendant call queues, and we also have a lot of content on networking. You will find the links to all of these trainings at the end of this session. So let's start with what is Cloud Voice? In order to understand Cloud PBX, let's look at the anatomy of a traditional PBX deployment. So at the very center, we have our PBX, our private branch exchange. It's a phone system within your business. It provides voice features to users and it will connect which means switches, call between users. And it can receive and send calls from and to the PSTN. On the left side, we can see our endpoints and clients. So these are the endpoints that connect to the PBX so that users can place calls and receive calls. And then on the right side, we have the PSTN and we can see here that we have trunks that connect to the PSTN. And this is really required so that users can be dialed with a can be called with a PSTN number and that they can dial out two PSTN numbers. Let's now take the same concepts to the cloud. The endpoints and clients with Skype for Business Online with Cloud PBX are all your Skype for Business clients that you already have and that you already love. The Windows client, the Mac client, um, iOS client, Android clients, Windows Phone clients, and IP phones. And 
in this scenario with Cloud PBX, they will be able to leverage all the features that you already know and that you have, instant message and presence, um, meetings, desktop sharing, all, all the others. And in addition, the PBX, the Cloud PBX will provide um, Cloud PBX features. If a user is in Skype for Business Online and has the appropriate license to leverage Cloud PBX. Now the remaining part, the trunks, this is how you connect the Cloud PBX to the PSTN. And there are multiple options. The first one would be Cloud PBX with PSTN calling. Um, that's what we call the option where Microsoft provides you the phone number. You have just a contract with Microsoft. Everything comes from Office 365. And that's where you get your phone numbers and users will dial out directly via Office 365 and will receive phone calls from there. Or if you want to build on your existing PSTN infrastructure, you can leverage either an existing on-premises pool to connect users to the PSTN, or you can use um, the Cloud Connector Edition. And we will talk a little bit more about that later in the training and also refer to more detailed training at the end. So while we talk about Cloud PBX, let's not forget that Skype for Business is truly a universal communication solution. So in addition to Cloud PBX features that we will cover in the rest of the session, keep in mind that you will still be able to use all these nice features, instant message and presence. You can send and receive instant message. You will see presence of your peers, of your contacts, based on their activity and calendar status. Um, you will be able to collaborate with other users. You can do audio calls, video calls, you can do desktop sharing. You have the capability to do online meetings, either ad hoc or schedule the meetings up front. You can present PowerPoints in these meetings. You can share applications and screens. And this works not only within your company, but also across companies. So if you have partner, if there are partners, customers, vendors you're working with, um, you can, and they have Skype for Business as well, you can connect to their environment and you will be able to use all these features across the companies. And we offer also dial-in conferencing. This can replace your existing audio conferencing bridge, fully integrated into Skype for Business so that in the online meetings you're having, you can dial in to the meetings and you can dial out from these meetings. Skype for Business Online, it's completely integrated into Office 365. So you will be able to use Azure Active Directory, SharePoint, Exchange, and other infrastructure with all the standards-based interoperability that we are offering. Um, it has all the manageability, security, and compliance of Office 365. And as mentioned before, Skype for Business Online allows you to connect to others. So you can have full federation with other Skype for Business environments, and you can do instant message presence, you can audio and video with Skype consumer users. Let's not forget about the service level agreement that Office 365 offers you. It's a financially backed SLA for availability and quality. That means if we don't meet our SLA, if we miss the numbers, then you will not have to pay for um, a certain amount of time. And well, in the lower right corner, you can actually see, depending on the update, uptime that we can offer you the service credit that you will receive. So Skype for Business is covered in this Office 365 SLA. Availability is measured for IAM and meetings and availability is measured for PSTN calling and conferencing. But at the same time, it's not just about availability. It's also about um, call quality. So we also offer our SLA for call quality. There are a few requirements. So you will have to use um, a certified IP phone with a wired Ethernet connection, and it needs to be sure that the issues don't come from your environment, but from a Microsoft network. But if all of this is in place, then also the SLA will be based on quality. Let's spend a few minutes on endpoints and clients. Here again, our anatomy of a traditional PBX deployment. So now let's talk about these endpoints and what it means in terms of Skype for Business. So in Skype for Business, we offer a rich set of clients. 
So you have the, these full rich clients as applications on your PC or Mac that we offer. You have mobile clients for iOS, Android or Windows phone. And then we offer IP phones, audio codes, Polycom and Yearlink. A few more words about IP phones. Um, we have a partner IP phone program where we get sure that all the phones that these partners are producing are tested against Office 365 so that they provide full functionality and provide a great uh, user experience and voice quality. So this Phone vendors, they built the firmware after our Microsoft specifications. We hand it over to the third party. They test it. Once the testing is passed, they end up on our website and they are listed as qualified phones. We are not looking only for um, a unified user experience. It is also important to us that there is a unified IT Pro experience. So we are looking for good manageability management and firmware can be done via in-band provisioning. That means when a phone signs in to Skype for Business Online with the account of a user from your company, then Office 365 will, through the in-band provisioning, send the configuration to the phone so that the phone knows what features it needs to enable and also if there are an update is available for the software. All these vendors have Skype for Business specific SKUs. That means, um, you will order the Polycom, Yearlink, Audio Codes phone that is specifically with the software for Skype for Business. And these phones are compatible with Skype for Business on-premises, if you still have the server version, or with Skype for Business online. All of them have plug and play, so there is no phone provisioning required. Yes, there are advanced tools that the vendor uh, vendors offer if you want to go deeper and if you want to do more specific configuration, but if you just want to get the out-of-box experience, Skype for Business will allow you that with these phones. So just plug them in, sign in, and users will be able to use that. In order to make it easier for users to sign in, there's also a new web sign-in version. And what that basically means is that you plug in your phone, then it will show you a code. The user goes to a website, enters the code, authenticates, and this way the phone will know because of the pairing of the code between the web application and the phone that the specific user just signed in. And that allows you to type in your username and password without having to type it on the, um, on the keypad of the phone itself, which is much more nicer than um, um, doing it the other way around. There is also some feature extensibility. So the the certification that we're doing ensures that the core functionality and quality is there. But the partners, Polycom, Yelling, and Audio Codes, can add functionality on top of that. So get sure to check out their offers, get sure what they, are, what they have, what they add, so that you meet your users' requirements. Polycom and Audio Codes are already certified today. Yearlink is in the progress, in the process of being certified, and we expect them early this quarter. And remember, this is the January 2017 training, so we expect them early this quarter to get qualified as well. Cloud PBX features. So now we will talk about the PBX and what features the PBX will provide to a Cloud PBX user. So this is your Skype for Business client. Um, you realize that now that the use is enabled for Cloud PBX, there is this new menu in the client for all the phone functionality. And we'll take a moment to take a look what, what's going on here. So in the search bar, you can search for a username or you can also just dial a phone number. And this also supports these vanity phone numbers that are very popular in some countries like the US where you could dial 1-800-Flowers, and then it would just translate that to the phone number and you could dial this phone number from there. Also, you can just search for users in your personal address book or the company address book. So if I type in a name and the user has a phone number, then I will be able to dial this phone number directly from here. If I'm more into dial pads, I can also do that. I can just use the dial pad and click on the phone numbers, or if I have touch screen, um, 
use that to dial the phone number and then call the phone number. You can also see your own phone number in case you forget it and you need to tell someone. It will be displayed right on the screen um, below the dial pad. Then you can also manage your voicemails. So all the voicemails you received will be listed here and you can listen to them and manage them, delete them right here from this menu. Finally, you can manage your call forward settings. And as you can see, all this new Cloud PBX functionality will be directly seamlessly into your client. When it comes to PSTN calling, there are lots and lots of features. And we want to get sure that we mention also the basic calling features. That's the features that you would probably expect to be there. But um, yeah, we just don't want to leave it open mysterious. Let's just spill out what it is. You can place and receive PST on calls and also put these calls on hold, retrieve them back. You can use this camp on feature. So if I want to reach someone, but I can see that the person is offline or busy, I can just tag the person. And as soon as the person comes back online, I will get a no notification so that they can call people. We will provide the ID, direct invert dialing phone numbers to all of your users with Cloud PBX, depending on what options you use to integrate it with the PSTN. These phone numbers will be either hosted by Microsoft or by yourself, but every user using Cloud PBX connected to the PSTN will have his or her own phone number. You can switch devices. So during a call, you can switch to a different device. So for example, if you start the call on your PC, but you want to continue in with your cell phone, you can just transfer an active call. And you can have distinctive ringing based on um, relationship settings. So if I take a certain user um, to be part of my work group, I can assign to that work group a different ringtone. So I always know um, what kind of user is calling me at the moment. We have music on hold. So if someone calls you and you put the caller on hold, they will be able to listen to the music on hold. And we have the Skype and federated calling. So we can call Skype consumer users and users um, on other in other companies having Skype for business. And also there is a call history um, for the user so that the user can go in and see what calls did they place and what calls did they receive. But also very important for the administrators, they are called detail records. So who called whom, when, how long was the call? This is very important for billing purposes and such. And we collect all of that and make it available to the administrator. We'll talk a little bit more about the reports later on when we talk about management capabilities. So there are not only these basic features, there's also advanced call routing. So when you are in do not disturb, Calls will be forwarded automatically to your voice groups, except, except for context that you tagged as your work group. So I can see, say a, spe a specific person is part of my work group. They will see my status that I don't want to be disturbed, but maybe it is important. So they decide to call me. Nevertheless, this call will go through. We also have the options of delegation. Um, it's also known as boss admin or as call on behalf. And it basically allows me to configure someone as my delegate and then configure that phone calls should not only ring me, but should also um, ring the delegate. There are more options. I can say after the amount of seconds, it should call the delegate. All of that I can configure. And I can have one or more delegates who can answer the call on my behalf. At the same time, Every delegate can be a delegate to multiple bosses. So I can have a complex structure where I have multiple people who need to have delegates and these delegates are actually shared between these um, bosses. These delegates, they can also place calls on my behalf. So they can call someone on my behalf. So if I'm a very important call, but because I'm so important, I'm not doing the call myself. I tell my delegate, please call someone on my behalf. They call, they make the connection, and then they can transfer the call to me. I can make also these settings based on um, my calendar and can either say calls should be forwarded to the delegates all the time or only during my work hours. 
Call forwarding, I can forward my calls to a different phone number, to a different user. I can enable also simultaneous rings so that not only my Skype for Business client ring, but also a specific phone number like a cell phone or a hard phone. And this can also be configured based on enterprise calendar. And finally, there's a feature called team call. So I can configure a team um, that any incoming call will also ring my team. The one of the differences to delegation is that someone in my team call, team, while they will receive my incoming calls, they won't be able to place calls on my behalf. And also there I can configure if I want the ringing to start simultaneously or delayed, for example, five seconds after the call came in. And there's more telephony features. I can transfer calls. I can do either a so-called blind transfer where I just transfer the call with someone before chatting with the other person. I can do a consultative transfer where I talk to the person before or have an IM conversation before I transfer the call. And I can transfer calls to mobile phones or to other phones numbers. We do support call ID. So if we call, call someone, they will see our call ID, but also if we receive a call, we will see the call ID of a person. Um, we will perform a reverse number lookup, which basically means we will look if for this phone number, we know who the user is. If there is a associated contact with that phone number in your um, personal or corporate address book. And if we find this user, then we will show you the contact information. So you will see the name of the user who is be calling. If we don't find them, we just show the phone number. We already mentioned the call history. So every user will have their own call history in the Skype for Business client, but also stored in Outlook. And you can pair with the phone. So if you have an IP phone, we talked about the IP phones already, then you can pair that with a PC. And that makes it easier to authenticate, but also it will allow you click to call so that you type a phone number on your PC or select a user on your PC or search for user on the PC and then say, well, I want to call this user and then you can do this call via your IP phone. Emergency calling is supported by Skype for Business Online. Um, the implementation details depend on how you connect Cloud PBX to the PSTN. So it's a little bit different if you have Cloud PBX with PSTN calling or if you have Cloud PBX via on-premise PSTN connectivity. Some things to keep in mind, power and internet is required. If you don't have power and or internet, then the phones won't be able to, well, then you won't be able to connect to your Skype for Business environment, and it's based on static location information. So users have a static location, and due to the nature of Skype for Business, the user might be traveling, roaming, working for some somewhere else. So the actual location might be different from the location that is stored for the user. Cloud PBX gives every user voicemail. So it will deliver this voicemail to your Exchange mailbox, and users will be able to either listen to the voicemail from the Skype for Business client, or they will be able to listen to it from Outlook. Exchange will be used to store this um, voicemail. That's also important for com compliance and archiving. And we support Exchange Online and also recent versions of Exchange servers on premise. If you want to do Exchange Server on-premise, there are a few details that you want to look at. Um, we have a dedicated training session on that. At the end of this session, there's a reference to that training so that you can look into all the details. Auto Attendant is a feature that is currently in preview. That means you can go to skypreview.com and sign up for the preview and test this functionality before we um, transfer it into general availability. That means also that features are subject to change. As a matter of fact, we are adding new functionality um, every couple of weeks so that until general availability is reached, we have a full and rich feature set. General availability is planned for March 2017. And please note, it is planned. So we're working very hard to make that happen, but it can always, um, it's always possible that dates change. Um, the auto attendant is an intelligent virtual receptionist. So people dial the specific number for the auto attendant, and then they can search for users either using DTMF with the keypad or by just saying 
um, the name of the person they want to reach and the speech recognition will help to understand who they are trying to talk to. And um, this will allow to transfer the incoming call then to a specific um, Skype for Business users who uses Skype for Business online. There's also an option for an operator. So if you want to configure your auto attendant this way, then people can, instead of searching for a user, decide that they want to talk to an operator. And this could be a specific Cloud PBX user. It could be a call queue or they could go to a voicemail. The auto attendant is customizable. So you can set up the greeting and the menus with text to speech. That means you just type the text and then the auto attendant, the Cloud PBX, will read the text as a greeting and this menu um, to the caller, or you can upload audio files as um, WAV files, MP3 or MWA. You can define different call flows based on the business hours and after hours. So during the day, you can have a different call flow that at night outside of your business hours. And for implementing auto attendant, you will be leveraging a Microsoft service number. And that means that you can use a toll number where the caller has to pay for the call or a toll free number where you are carrying the cost for the call. Call queues is also a feature that is in premium. So the same applies. Um, you can sign up for this feature in skypepreview.com and get early exposure to it. However, features are subject to change. So we are adding features over time and general availability is planned for March 2017. And again, as always, we work very hard to meet these timelines, but it can be, um, it might be that they, they move. So call queues are there really for call queuing and distribution. So the goal is to achieve faster call resolution times using intelligent call distribution. So you can set up custom greetings and you can select the music on hold for every queue and then add online users who have a Cloud PBX license as agent. That means if anyone calls into the specific number that you're using, the, the calls will be distributed to these agents and they can then answer these questions. Um, the calls will wait in the queue until an agent is available. So you can get sure that there is no call that stays unanswered. You have several options for configuring your call queues. You can set a maximum um, queue size and the call timeout and have different options for the overflow and timeout. So either you can disconnect users, callers, you can redirect them to a specific user, you can redirect them to a call queue, um, to an auto attendant or to a voicemail. And again, we are leveraging here Microsoft service numbers, so you can use toll numbers or toll free numbers. By the way, for both auto attendant and call queues, we have more deep dive trainings and um, we will reference give you a reference to it at the end of this training. So if you want to learn all the details about auto attendant and or call queues, you can go to the trainings and consume them. So I mentioned the service numbers. They are required for a number of Cloud PBX services. Um, we mentioned them for the call queues. We mentioned them for the auto attendant. They are also used for dial-in conferencing. And these service numbers are special phone numbers that allow for very high concurrency. So hundreds of calls can be connected to the same number at the same time. And that's what you really need if you have dial-in conferencing, if you have call queues, if you have an auto attendant. And they will be provided from Microsoft for exact these purposes. You can bring your own number. So if you have an existing number and you want to transfer that to Microsoft, you can do that. There's a process to, to transfer these numbers and then you can continue to use that number. And depending on your needs, you can configure the number as a toll number or a toll free number. In the toll number, people who are calling the phone number, they have just to pay the regular um, um, phone fees. In the toll free number, you are paying for that. So if you want to have a toll free number, you need in addition to set up consumption based billing, where you will then based on the consumption, pay for um, the usage of the toll free numbers. So let's now take a look to the other side. We talked a lot about the features that are available. Let's talk about administration. So you can configure all these features either using the graphical user interface, going to the 
Office 365 administrator portal and configure users, configure services, do some settings. And that's really great if you want to configure a small group of users, maybe pilot users, maybe specific users, if you want to do some global configuration, these one-time settings. However, if you want to configure multiple users, groups of users, your whole company, then we recommend to look into PowerShell. So you can connect PowerShell to Office 365. You can run scripts for use enablement, for configuration, and that's really great to enable or configure a large number of users. Or if you want to create some automation tasks for user provisioning, so maybe you have already something that sets up exchange mailboxes, user policies, and so on, you can integrate your Skype for Business provisioning into that and get sure that everything is configured correctly. Also very interesting for administrators is the reporting. So we do have very rich reporting on both usage. So how often is your service used or is Office 3, Skype for Business and Office 365 used and the quality. So there are these usage statistics. They can give you insights into if the if Skype for Business Online is used per workload. So how many instant messages do you have? How many conferences and so on? And then there are more specific reports on PSTN calling so that you can see um, how many numbers are called and which users are using this. Call quality is all about, well, is the quality good? Because it's great if users are using it, but they will only continue using it if the quality meets the bar. So what we have here is the call quality dashboard that can give you very detailed accumulated quality data and will give you insights into um, uh, what, what locations in your environment have good or bad quality. You, ca you can slice and dice it per network segment, per client version, per audio device, um, all of that. And there is actually a training series for CQD and I referred to um, our resources a couple of times already. At the end of this training, you will find a resources section where you will find a link to the call quality dashboard trainings. Um, there are also quality reports for individual calls. And that's really a scenario where someone tells you, hey, I just had a very poor call or I had just this or that happening on a call. Can you look into that? And yeah, administrators can do that. They are able to look into individual call um, uh, quality reports for calls. And then on top of that, we obviously have call detail records, who called whom, when, how long, so that you get all of this information as well. What you can see here is an example for a PS10 usage report. So you can see here the date and the time, you can see a username, you can see the call type, you can see a location and the call duration. So that gives you all the information that you need to know. You can download that as a CSV file and um, and you can also do download it with PowerShell if you want to take this data and put it into a different system. Here's an example for the call quality dashboard. So this gives you an overview of the quality that you are observing in your quality. So on the left, you can see an example for overall call quality. You can see in the screenshot, there are audio streams monthly trend. You can see a daily trend. You can see server client monthly trend and the daily trend for that. And that can give you an indication on, hey, what are my users experiencing? Are we having a good quality or not? And then on the right, you can see a more detailed um, report where um, it shows how you can customize these reports. And here it shows you again per month um, the number of good, key, good audio calls, unclassified calls, poor calls, and then the percentage of the poor calls. So hopefully we have now a very good understanding on the features that Cloud PBX offers us. Now the big question is, how do we get the Cloud PBX to connect to the PSTN? Again, here's our picture of what a PBX deployment looks like. And we will now concentrate on this trunk piece on how is the PBX connected to the PSTN. In general, there are two options. One, you can get a PSTN calling add-on to the Cloud PBX. It's a first party offer from Microsoft available in specific countries as a regulated utility. So Microsoft 
will give you not only the Cloud PBX features, it will also give you the PSTN phone number and you just need to connect. Your user just need to connect to Office 365, sign in into Skype for Business and they will get all the Skype for Business features, including the phone number. So it is completely cloud based. There's no required infrastructure on premises. So it is just the cloud. There's no single server that you need for this on in your data center or in your environment. And this is most tightly integrated with Office 365 and Cloud PBX. The other option is that you use your on-premise PSTN connectivity. So if you have already your Skype for Business server connected to um, uh, the PSTN, you can leverage that. Or if you don't have a Skype for Business server, you can use Cloud Connector, which is an offering. It's a packaged VM. It's for new customer deployments. You deploy it in your environment. It has very small footprint and allows to integrate with the PBX. Using the on-premises PSTN connectivity allows you to connect to your existing PBX. It allows you to um, leverage your existing carrier and contracts and circles. So if you want or need to continue using that, on-premise PSTN connectivity is a very good option. A few more details on Cloud PBX with PSTN calling. Cloud PBX with PSTN calling is delivered end-to-end -end by Microsoft. So the PSTN connectivity is coming directly from us. That means you have a single contract for all the features, including PSTN calling, and you get your phone numbers from Microsoft. This will give you the highest level of customer experience. So across end users and administration experience. Your administrator just goes to one single interface and that's where users are enabled, the features are enabled, where phone numbers are required, and so on. And for end users, everything is fully integrated. Obviously, we meet all the legal requirements required in the markets that we are active. Currently, this is, uh, is available in the USA, in Puerto Rico, in UK, in France, and in Spain, it is in preview. Additional regions will be added over time. Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity can be done either with, an, either with an existing pool, if you have already Skype for Business Server, or via Cloud Connector. So you can take advantage of any existing Skype for Business infrastructure. If you don't have any pool, then you can deploy Cloud Connector. Please note that with the current version of Cloud Connector, we cannot coexist with any Skype for Business servers might already be existing. So if you have Skype for Business servers already, then you need to use this Skype for Business infrastructure for the on-premise PSTN connectivity. If you don't have Skype for Business or any previous versions, then you can deploy the Cloud Connector. It will allow you to take advantage of your existing communication infrastructure and retain your car carrier contract. So if you have a PBX and if you have a carrier contract and you don't want or you cannot let go, at the moment, because maybe it's a really good rate that you negotiated because it's valid for the next five years and it would not make sense to um, not use it anymore. Well, you can still use it and your users can still be in Office 365 Skype for Business Online and leverage that PSTN connectivity. Um, there is a smaller footprint on site since now you need only to support PSTN connectivity, all the meetings, um, all the presence, instant message, all these things, they will be taken care of for online users in Office 365. So if you have an existing Skype for Business server on-premise infrastructure and you move all your users to Office 365, then the load on this service will reduce. And it's available worldwide. You can use it wherever um, Office 365 is available. One thing that you should never forget about when we talk about Skype for Business, but specifically when we talk about telephony and voice capability, is the network. The quality that your users will experience will be only as good as the network allows. And here, if we talk about this cloud offer from Microsoft, there are three networks that you need to think about. First, on the very left, you can see the on-premise network and the devices. This is your, in your office, your wireless network, your wired network, but also the devices. Then there is this interconnect network, 
your internet provider who connects you to the Office 365 cloud, to the Microsoft network. The Microsoft network on the very right, we prioritize voice traffic. We invested a lot of money and work to make this a network that will allow you to have the best quality possible. However, the other two networks, the enterprise network and the interconnect network, you need to get sure that they provide the quality that they need to. Um, we have detailed planning guidance available in our Skype operations framework for the readiness. There are trainings, there are, there's material, there are assets that we highly recommend to use to get sure that your network is ready for this time of real time um, communication so that your users will have a great experience using Skype for Business. Additionally to networking, there are more planning considerations. Um, first of all, the user location. And we're not referring here to the physical user location, but to where the account of the user is homed. So you could establish hybrid between your environment where some of your users are homed in your Skype for Business on-premise environment, and some of the users are homed in Office 365, Skype for Business Online. And it's important that only those users who are already moved to Office 365, to Skype for Business Online, only these users will be able to leverage Cloud PBX. Coexistence, we talked about that before. If you're looking into providing Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity, you need to understand if there is an existing Skype for Business environment um, in your company, or maybe link. Um, and if it is, then you need to use that for your Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity. If you don't have an existing environment, then you can leverage Cloud Connector um, to introduce uh, this connectivity. Um, if you want to use, if there's a need that you use the existing PSTN connectivity, then you would use Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity, um, either with a full Skype for Business pool or Cloud Connector Edition. Another important thing to understand is that you can mix and match what your users are using. So let's say as an example, I have a company with a large user group in the US, and because in the US PSTN calling, um, uh, because in the US Cloud PBX with PSTN calling is already available, I can configure the users to use it to get their PSTN connectivity, while at the same time I have users in Germany, and because in Germany um, Cloud PBX with PSTN calling is not available yet, I will use Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity, either with Cloud Connector or an existing pool to provide this functionality to my users. Another important consideration is that the features in Skype for Business online and on-premise are not 100% the same. So some of the features are not available in online or in Skype for Business on-premises, but it also means that if you have already users using um, telephony capability in Skype for Business on premises and you're looking to move them into Skype for Business online, you really need to look if the requirements of the users can be met so that you don't have um, an unfortunate surprise when users realize that the user experience has changed. In the Skype operations framework, there is um, a customer journey called online migration and I highly encourage you to look at that. There are persona workshops that will help you to understand what features are available to what users in what situations, and that should be used to plan <clears throat> what groups of users you want to move to Office 365, um, Skype for Business Online, or who you want to keep on premises. So from a high level perspective, how do you make these decisions? First of all, what are your business requirements? and what, which option gives you, um, meets these requirements. So are there any requirements for specific features? Are there ever any requirements to continue leveraging um, a PB, P, PBX on premises or a PSTN provider contract? Next, what are the supported regions? So if you want to enable users for Cloud PBX with PSTN calling. Where are these users located? Is the service even available in these regions? And once you figure that out, well, then you can start moving users. Aim for the low hanging fruits first. Find out which users will benefit most 
of being moved to Office 365 and benefit most of leveraging Cloud PBX. And this is the users where you want to start. So let's bring it all together. The key learnings of this session. Today, we spoke about Cloud PBX and how it provides telephony features to your future, to your users. So users in Skype for Business Online can be enabled for Cloud PBX. They will get a rich set of telephony features. And as an administrator, you will get a lot of management tools and reports that will help you to effectively manage that environment. In order to connect this Cloud PBX to the PSTN, we have multiple options. You can get either the telephony service completely from Microsoft in specific countries, or you can leverage your existing PSTN infrastructure by using an existing Skype for Business pool or by deploying Cloud Connector Edition. So now we start with the resources. I mentioned several times that we have technical deep dive trainings to better understand how to configure specific features, how to manage them, and they are here. So please look at these trainings for auto attendant, call queues, cloud PBX voicemail with exchange on premises, cloud IP phones, and call quality dashboard training series. The one on the cloud IP phone is actually not a training, it's a, our catalog where you can find all the phones that have been tested and are certified today. Then we have more trainings on Cloud PBX PSTN connectivity. So right now, hopefully you understand what Cloud PBX means, um, but here are specific trainings that will go deeper into how do I connect my, how do I configure my Cloud PBX with PSTN calling? How do I configure my Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity via existing pool? And finally, um, what does it mean Cloud PBX with an on-premise PSTN calling via Cloud Connector Edition? The Skype Operations Framework, I managed it several times as a reference. It is an end-to-end -end framework to implement successfully Skype for Business so that your users will have a great communications experience. I highly encourage you to look at the Get Deployed customer journey, the Cloud Migration customer journey that will take you from the beginning to the end to either in Greenfield use the Get Deployed where you don't have Skype for Business today, but you, you will then use Skype for Business Online or the Cloud Migration where you start with an on-premise environment and take that to Office 365. In terms of net network readiness, there is in SOF a network readiness assessment. Please look at that. Please invest the time, look at your network, get sure that the network can provide the performance that is required to have a good experience in Skype for Business calls. Um, operate, very important. Once you have implemented it, maintain it, get sure that it, it keeps giving you great performance. So there is our operate phase. And then finally, we do have a lot of trainings for SOF. You can find the URL here and it includes trainings on persona workshops, network readiness, and much more. Community and blog. So we have our community at aka.ms slash soft community. Please come there, discuss with us, give us feedback, ask us questions. We would love to hear from you what you think about this training. And there's also the soft and academy blog um, where we publish new trainings, where we announce new trainings, where we announce new assets in soft. So go to the blog subscribe to the RSS feed, stay up to date so that you have always the latest information. And with that, I want to thank you for your time and for attending this training.